This is the Saucony Peregrine 11. The newest version of what I can imagine has been one of Saucony's most popular trail offerings. I've run in a number of Peregrine versions over the years and have found that the more recent versions are the best versions. With the newly designed lightweight upper, the Peregrine 11 continues to evolve in small increments much to the delight of those who love the shoe. The Peregrine 11 is the same lower stack yet protective offering from Saucony that we saw in the 10th version. It features the responsive Power Run midsole used in a number of Saucony offerings and the super lugged Power Track outsole that's designed to grip in all the elements that you throw at it. But with a lower stack height, super responsive midsole, and a ton of extra protection, does the Saucony Peregrine 11 stand out amongst the competition? Does it even need to? Can a new upper design in the 11th version bring the Saucony Peregrine into the limelight? Hopefully I'll answer some of those questions in today's review. Let's get started. Ginger Runner. What is up everybody? Ethan Newberry, the Ginger Runner here for another Ginger Runner review. Today we're gonna be talking about the Saucony Peregrine 11. It's actually only my second Peregrine that I've reviewed on this channel, though it is not my second Peregrine that I've tested. I remember buying the first version way back when, thinking it was gonna be the Kinvara of the trail and was pretty disappointed in how that first version turned out. Uh, but here we are, 11 versions later, and I'm happy to report on this, talking about all the things I like and dislike about a shoe, same as we always do in these reviews. So I'm excited to dive in. But of course, before we do, bit of a disclaimer, all shoes and all products that I review on this channel are provided to me either by Running Warehouse or by the brands themselves. I am under no obligation to say anything whatsoever about any of the products. I am not financially compensated for anything that I say on this channel. It's all honest, it's all my opinion. I stand by everything I say. Today is no different now we can dive on in. We like to talk about the things we like and dislike about a shoe. Peregrine 11's no exception. Let's talk about the things that I like. Protection. So this is actually something I feel like this shoe does better than the previous versions, uh, both from underfoot and from above. I think the level of protection from sharp objects, roots, rocks, technical terrain, the shoe does a really good job of protecting your foot. The redesigned upper helps contribute to that. The mesh is a bit more plasticine. Underneath you have rock protection, uh, a full rubber outsole, and a very responsive dense midsole material. So you're getting plenty of protection from all angles. And you really notice it, especially on sharp rocks and technical terrain. It's not gonna eat up the bottom of your feet. So if you're looking for that additional protection, that I think is probably one of the biggest standouts of the Peregrine. The new upper. So as I kind of mentioned there, uh, the new upper, new materials, new fabrics, new overlays, it is, uh, it's a nice step up as far as protection, durability, all that good stuff. The welded overlays give you plenty of toe protection, medial, lateral, and heel side protection as well. While this new mesh, new upper does provide plenty of breathability, it's not gonna be as breathable as, as a really soft mesh fabric, but that's okay. Uh, this is a really, really nice upper. It's a great upgrade from the previous version. That gives a thumbs up. Outsole or their power track outsole material. I haven't always been a fan of outsoles that just have a lot of lugs, especially close proximity lugs. I, I feel like it sort of takes away from the overall ability to grip in a variety of surfaces. The Peregrine sort of borderlines on that. There's just, there's a ton of lugs here. But what I do like is that they work. The chevron shape, the size, the orientation, whether in the forefoot or the heel. I've run in a ton of slop with these. Uh, we just had a big snowstorm here in the Pacific Northwest and I was able to run a little bit of that with these. Uh, they get good grip and I'm a fan of that, especially right now in this season when everything is disgusting on the trails. So uh, yeah, the outsole. Pretty good. That being said, it is not all waffles and Dogecoin surges. There are a couple of things that I dislike about the Saucony Peregrine 11. Let's get to those now. Dynamics. So I'm gonna do my best to sort of describe what I'm feeling in this shoe. The midsole is not soft, it's not cushioned. It doesn't really allow a lot of forgiveness. If you are into a responsive shoe, if you are into a shoe that's a little bit stiffer, a little bit harder underfoot while giving you plenty of protection, but not a lot of ground feel, that's sort of where this shoe lies. There are a couple of shoes out in the market that I think a lot of people really enjoy that has that sort of as a feature set. That's where the Peregrine comes in. Uh, so it's not gonna be very forgiving in the soft cushion department. I think it loses some of its dynamics as a result. Uh, you get a lower stack, very responsive, tight ride 
with not a lot of ground feel, not a lot of lateral flexibility. So overall, uh, the shoe doesn't feel like it has as much life as I would hope to have out of it. I'll make a comparison here in just a moment uh, to some other shoes that I think do a good job of providing both. Fun, runnable dynamics, as well as being low and responsive. And my final dislike is foot shape. And that really sort of comes here through the midfoot and into the toe box. It's a very traditional shaped uh, shoe. If you prefer a wider toe box, you'll get a bit of that width here across the vamp. The second you start getting into the toe box area, there is gonna be the ability for toes to start going over the top of each other, which is never a comfortable thing. It's just the shape of the foot here is more on the narrow end. Just wanna give everyone a little bit of warning there. So that is pretty much it for major dislikes. So in conclusion, this is a solid shoe for those looking for simplicity. I think the Peregrine 11 is very comparable to the Brooks Catamount or the Solomon Sense 4 Pro. I'd say if each of those three shoes was some sort of tool, the Solomon Sense 4 Pro would be the scalpel, the Brooks Catamount would be the box cutter, and the Peregrine 11 would be the butter knife. Clearly, all three tools to do the same job, uh, some just more efficiently than others. But I look at something like the Peregrine 11 and I see where Saucony has gone in the last year, two years with what they're doing, especially on the roadside, and I can't help but ask, what would an endorphin trail shoe look like? That is where my excitement lies. All right, let's get a little bit more specific. Build, uh, it's a solid build quality. I think the upper is a nice addition, changes a bit of the materials, makes this a fairly durable shoe. I think could get hundreds of miles out of this thing uh, and still have a lot of fun in it. Comfort, it's not as comfortable as other trail shoes, purely because that power run midsole is super dense, very responsive, while also being still very flexible. So you're gonna lose a bit of life out of the comfort zone. But for those who like a denser midsole, don't want that thing to flatten out too prematurely, this might have it. Fit, it's gonna fit fairly true to size. I'm a size 11, no problems here. Watch the narrowness in the toe. You're gonna to wanna to try these on before purchasing for sure. Price at $120, it's a pretty decent price point for a pair of shoes, uh, trail shoes specifically, that I do think you'll get plenty of life out of. Uh, the comparison I made earlier, the Catamount and the Sense 4 Pro, both of those are more expensive shoes. So if you're looking at price and you're on a budget uh, and you're looking for a trail shoe, this could be a good offering. And finally, looks. What's funny is the appearance of the shoe really reminds me of a toddler's Velcro shoe. It just kind of has the, the bright, fun colors, but mostly black to kind of hide the blemishes and the dirt and stuff like that. So for me, I, I'm not really into the looks of this. There's another color version that's a bit better, if not more muted. Uh, but for this, it looks a bit childish. Bringing us to our final criteria is the Saucony Peregrine 11 a buy try or why, distilling it down to its simplest form, it's a try. I think there's a good portion of people who are looking for shoes that aren't full of foam, that aren't super high stacks, that will give you a lower profile, more durable, highly protective ride. That's where the Peregrine 11 comes in. I think it will make some of you quite happy, especially if you're used to other versions of the Peregrine. You're gonna fit right in to the new version. So that, my friends, is it for today's review. My question now turns to you. Have you tried the Saucony Peregrine 11? What do you think of this shoe? If you used the other Peregrines in the past, how do they hold up for you? What are your pros and cons? Um, use the comments of this video to let us know all about that. If you like this review, make sure you like, favorite, subscribe to the channel, click the bell, all that typical YouTube end of video announcement stuff. I've got social media links you can follow across the board there. At the bottom, Patreon, that is how we keep the lights on and the mics hot here. We have an incredible crew of runners from around the world there. Uh, we do daily live streams. We have some really fun competitions and stuff coming up. You're not gonna wanna miss out. So head on over to patreon.com slash the ginger runner to join the crew. Otherwise, that's it, my friends. Thank you so much for tuning into today's review. We'll see you guys next week for more fun. Get out there, train hard, race harder, and party to the hardest. I know I am. We'll see you guys next week. Bye bye <music>